good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel if you've not already please like and subscribe it doesn't cost you a thing and helps the channel to grow today we're going to be changing a wheel on this trailer um you can see here what i've had to do is had to put a chamfer on these nuts because unfortunately my worst fears came true when i had a look at this the other day what's happened is these tabs on here they're not reinforcement tabs they are because at some point the wheels come loose and what that's meant is that when the wheels come loose it's actually worn the stud which i'll show you a little bit later on so what i've done in preparation for today's job is to put a chamfer on the inside of these nuts and this was a double-edged nut originally with some weird ball nose end on it to locate so i've skimmed the face out to get it in the lathe and put the chamfer on that one as well um i don't know how long that's going to last that's probably going to go pop when i move it so what we're going to do is take the <coughs> wheels off of this trailer for now uh, I've already done one which is sitting on there so let us know in the comments whether you think that that wheel is better or the old original wheel is better one problem I do have is I don't think and we'll check this in a minute when we get them side by side I don't think that the original wheels are actually a true pair and it's just starting to rain so we best get cracking Big, big split there, folks. Need a bit of wind in that one. We do a tire pressure check once we've got them in. Um, oh dear, that has broken at some point. My slab, not good. Uh, not good at all. Never mind. It is what it is. Off. 
So this is what I was saying, these aren't really reinforcing things. What's happened is, you see on the other side, see how well these fit to the bolt holes? What somebody's done is, when I first got these nuts, they were just normal nuts with a flat face on. So somebody's bolted that on and they've done welded that plate in to give the wheel another lease of life. But this wheel, the valve is on this side. You can see that the corrosion's setting in there a bit. And behind here is where the rivets are. And on the other wheel, the valve is on the side where you can see the rivets. But you see that a bit more clearly in a minute. And the other thing with doing that is every time you put the wheel on and off, it actually chews the end of the thread up. And another job we've got to do with these is the bearings are dry, so if I've got to change the bearings or we've got to repack them with grease as well at a later point. But at the moment, all we're interested in doing is putting these wheels on so that when we move the trailer, it travels better across the ground. Um, when I say travels better, doesn't leave bigger ruts because we've got a wider wheel um, which means we have a bigger footprint which means less ground pressure and a bale spike probably one of the best pry bars you can ever get from my experience so see how much easier that went on because the holes are correct uh, slightly bigger than the thread got the tape in the holes I'll take the tape that I've machined on there which I did on the lathe last night um, and then the taper is what keeps the wheel central and concentric to the stud without actually touching the stud. Uh, one problem we might have is that the damage on the bolts is now stopping the nut going on. which is not ideal. Oh. Something's not happy there. <coughs> That's really not happy at all. This is not working quite as well as I wanted. Because I'm a, uh, I don't show you did I just sort of that damage. But we're going to be changing these studs for 16 mil studs and new nuts anyway. Um, alternatively, I might see if I can put some Land Rover type pubs on, just because I've got them in. definitely on the brake but I'm moving literally from here to the other side of the garden to get it on the ramp so I'm not really concerned about that a little bit of playing the wheel bearing but the wheels on now the wheels not moving on the hub so we are good there <coughs> Like I say, we're going to be um, taking the hubcaps off, uh, checking the bearings, putting some grease in them if they need it. And yeah, if we need to, we'll change the hubs out, but we're definitely going to be changing these studs. And the other side, changing our wheel nuts, we're going to go for M16 by 1.5 thread, which is a standard pitch and readily available and a lot cheaper than 5.8 UNC Imperial. 
so that's all we're doing for today. Uh, I'm going to try and get rid of this Christmas lurgy now. And oh, yeah, I was going to show you on the back of here, weren't I? So, yeah, all these cracks are one of my concerns. But as we can see on the back side, yeah, how concentric that all is, I don't know. Um, but yeah, very, very, very worn. Um, see what I'm saying about the rivets here? So, I'll show you what it looks like against the other wheel in a minute. Nice and easy. Good spread up like that. Job to good in. Um, yeah, so pop that way in a minute and we'll compare these two wheels. So yeah, this is what I was saying. Um, that's the tire valve there. These are the plates that was welded on this wheel. And see how you can't see any rivets in here because they are actually on this wheel on the back side down in there. And we look at the of the wheel and we can see the rivets and the tyre valve is on the other side so that means that the offset on that wheel is different to this one which ain't great and they're not identical wheels are they so um, they're very very similar to a standard Land Rover wheel the only major difference being is I can see is this dish isn't really that deep um, on these so it's yeah it's a bit of an no-brainer really if I, if I could find a nice matching pair that aren't Land Rover wheels it'd be good because <coughs> I'll show you on this side the um <coughs> I mean the Land Rover wheel looks okay don't get me wrong and if I got a nine inch set or set of 750s where this offset was more then I think they'd look better but you can see the depth of this bit here is completely wrong so um yeah that's that really so we've got the two wheels on now um we put the carburetor back on the old girl a couple of days ago what we've done is we've put some there's carburetors back on now um yeah we put some uh two stroke coiling with the petrol and we put just enough in the tank to keep the carburetor full and hopefully the oil will go into the cork gasket that's on the tap as well um, and yeah I get this starting noise in oh yeah one last thing I was going to say to people um, I've just ordered myself a Milwaukee half inch impact gun problem we've been having is you get the half inch these are like the screwdriver drill combo things the half inch ones are these bits the adapters they keep breaking and what I found is the 3 8 drive one with an adapter takes a lot more hammer as you've just seen there um, so if you're gonna buy an impact gun get a proper impact gun not a drill combo if you want a drill combo for putting screws in then get a drill combo not an impact gun and um, the 3 8 Milwaukee and the half inch Milwaukee ones I believe both generate the same power output and physically I don't think there's a lot of difference in the size of them either so it's uh, up to yourselves which size you're up for really but I've gone for a half inch just because it saves me using an adapter all the time because the majority of my socket's a half inch and if I want to drop down I'll drop down with an adapter so yeah um, <clears throat> thanks for watching really uh, like I say please like and subscribe if anyone wants a three and a half litre, no sorry, if anyone wants a 3.9 litre auto Range Rover Roland chassis then let me know. If anyone wants the engine or the gearbox or the axles let me know. Um, it's going to get broke up and go down with scrap soon because I just want it off the trailer so I can get the trailer finished. And that really is about it. You see these are the military wheels and they've got a slightly deeper offset here. So they fit on the trailer a bit better. Um, 
the M16 wheel nuts and studs so I've got to like the option of using them Range Rover ones I can put a blanking plate on there and they look quite tidy on that trailer the old Fergie, the tyres are just starting to perish a bit so I'm going to be in the market for some new tyres soon and once I've got them new tyres what I plan to do is put the new tyres on the Fergie and then <coughs> these baked and dew wheels I've got here take them tyres off there because they're too big and put them old tyres on there instead unless anybody wants to buy them they are the five wheel type uh, dual wheeled uh, on 28 inch rims let me just have a look see if we can see what the size is I'm sure they're 14 foot nines maybe uh, but Goodyear tie on one god knows what's on the other uh, haven't got a clue well, there's no cracking I can see from here there might be, well, there's a bit of cracking there right but um, uh, do we have a size anywhere Chill grip, oh, seat traction. Not too sure if we can anywhere see its size, but we go around the wheel anyway. 13.612 CR. If anybody's interested in a set of them, let me know. Uh, I'm quite happily moving on. I did get them for the T20 originally, but <coughs> yeah, it, uh, it probably ain't gonna happen so. I actually have a good wheel and tyre there that I can use which would be better uh, it's a discovery tyre, that doesn't belong to me but I'm sure the owner won't notice it going missing he probably will when he watches this video right? but uh, yeah um, I'll have it on long term lease I think until it all cracks up and dies away so thanks for watching yeah, like I say please like and subscribe and we'll uh, get a few more videos out when I'm feeling a bit better